This is a nano electro spray form with a 20 micron ID sharp similarity emitter. In this series, I'm going to show you how to make stable electro sprays. Nano electro sprays are used in many applications like proteomics, metabolomics, and lipidomics, to name a few. One of the keys to getting nice signals is having an optimized and stable electro spray. For a fixed flow rate, this means finding the right voltage and the right position. These are the first parameters to optimize. In a previous video, I showed a large and slow electro spray made with soap, but I still wanted to see a real nano electro spray. So I put one under the microscope. This is what I saw. This is a nano electro spray, not stable yet. Let me adjust the voltage. There we are. This is a well formed cone with a jet. That voltage is too high. Let's reduce it a bit. And there we are. To get good and stable signals, you have to get this right. Ions come from the droplets and good droplets, that means small and with a lot of electric charge, come from the jet which comes from the meniscus. To make good ions, you have to get the meniscus and the jet right. It's like golf. Once the ball is out, there is nothing you can do. You have to make sure you have a good swing. Getting a stable electro spray under the microscope was easier than expected, mostly because I can see it. But how do you know you have a stable electro spray in the lab? Ideally, you would want to see and fine tune the meniscus, just like I did. But in practice, the only clue you have is the signal in the mass spectrometer. If the signal looks good, you have a good spray. If not, you need to keep tweaking. Yeah. In the lab, we're blind. One of the main reasons getting a stable electro spray is so hard is because we cannot see it. If you can see it, you don't know what's happening and you don't know how to adjust. The good thing is now we have a nano electro spray under the microscope. So we can see what it does when it's stable and most importantly, what it does when it's not. The idea of this video is to help you extrapolate what you see here to your lab so that you can better interpret what your electro spray is doing. This is my setup. I'm testing a sharp singularity electro spray emitter with an inner diameter of 20 microns. The nano spray system of a super sassy ion source, a microscope, and a high voltage power supply. The liquid is water, acetonitrile, and formic acid, a common mix used in proteomics workflows. This is the minimum magnification of my microscope. We have the emitter and a droplet. Let's see what happens as we increase the voltage. The droplet at the tip starts dripping, it forms a pulsating cone, and then a stable cone. Let's see that again. Dripping, pulsating, stable cone. One more time. See the pattern? Let's zoom in. We should see the same pattern. Do you see that sometimes the image has a semi-transparent cone and a semi-transparent round droplet? That is because the spray is pulsating so fast that the camera can see the transition and we see the two superimposed images. Once I have the right voltage, I can stop and restore the liquid flow and the cone will come back where it was. Let's get closer. The pattern repeats as expected. And there we are. We can even see the jet. The diameter of the emitter is 20 micron, so the diameter of the jet is smaller than 1 micron. If I go too high with the voltage, the jet points sideways. So now you know whether there is a voltage switch spot. If the voltage is too low, the meniscus will be dripping or pulsating. Too high and the jet will point sideways, or you may even have several jets. We want the jet to aim at the right spot in the inlet of the mass spectrometer. This brings me to the position of the meter. So what is the best position? To answer that, let's start by analyzing the anatomy of the expanding electrospray plume. The jet breaks into droplets that evaporate and shrink in size. When they can't retain their charge, these droplets explode. Those explosions are called columbic fissions. Columbic fissions produce much smaller and electrically charged droplets, which then produce the ions. But they also produce large droplets with little charge. I will call those zombie droplets. The zombie droplets stay aligned with the jet because they have a lot more inertia. The smaller droplets and ions are repelled more rapidly, and for this reason they deviate from the axis of the jet. 
The result is that the central part of the spray is full of zombie droplets and the suburbs are rich in nano droplets and ions. Of course we want to collect the outer part of the spray and avoid the central part to get the nice ions and avoid the zombie droplets. That is why the spray is normally set at an angle with respect to the MS inlet. Another tip to make sure you get the right side of the plume is to offset the emitter and the MS inlet. For the sharp singularity emitters, about 2.5 kV usually work very well. In these experiments, the meniscus split into three jets at about 3.5 kV. As you can see, you won't break anything by rising the voltage, so don't be afraid of increasing it. The worst thing will happen is your jet will point sideways and your signal will be bumpy. The quality of the data is linked to the quality of the electrospray. This is why having a good, stable electrospray is so important. So, is it possible to improve it, or do we have to accept the status quo? Electrospray is complex, but not chaotic. This means it's possible to learn and improve, as long as the system is reproducible. The geometry of the electrospray also has to be reproducible. That's how you can extrapolate lessons learned from one emitter to the next. I founded Fossil Ion Tech in 2016 to develop Taylor electrospray ionization sources for real-time metabolomics. We found that the emitters were a source of variability, so we decided to address it. And that's how we started making high-precision nanoelectrospray emitters. We micromachine them under the microscope. We know they have the optimum geometry because we can see them while we make them. There's a link in the description in case you want to use them. We are on a mission to make nanoelectrospray reliable to improve the quality of proteomics and metabolomics data. The voltage and the emitter position are the most accessible parameters you can tune to get a nice nanoelectrospray, but there is much more. I will produce more videos to address other factors. I'll see you in the next!